Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. Ever since we started the show, I get a lot of people that ask me what they should look for in their first reptile. I'm gonna take a look at some animals and what you should be looking for if you're thinking about keeping a pet snake. I'll even talk about sizes and some cage requirements. You're watching Snake Bites. When getting your first snake, or even if you have a few snakes and are considering a new snake, you have to consider the amount of cage space you're going to have, the amount of money you need to spend on the animal, and all the requirements that it might take. Also, how the temperament is. If you want an animal that's a little edgy or a really docile animal like this ball python, I always say ball pythons make one of the great first pets. There's a handful of animals that are in that category, but you can't go wrong with a ball python. This guy is just about a month and a half old and is about 100 grams. And here's an adult ball python. She's about 1,500 to 1,700 grams and about four foot long. They don't get much larger than this. They might get a foot or so longer and another five or 600 grams, and that's usually about the adult size. The thing that's cool is, again, is how docile they are. They make fantastic pets. They're super easy to care for. And one of the things that's really cool about ball pythons is they come in all kinds of different colors. So if you want something a little more exotic, depending on your price point, you can pretty much buy anything you want. Another fantastic pet snake is a corn snake. The thing that's so awesome about them is when they hatch out, they're just so darn cute, and they eat pinky mice at this size, and they're super docile. You're never gonna get an animal that's gonna be very aggressive. They're very easy to care for. They don't get very large, and if you got kids or something like that, they're a fantastic starter snake. This is actually the adult female scaleless corn snake, which is basically about the size of all adult corn snakes. They can get a little bit bigger, but you can tell that these animals are very manageable, something that you can easily keep in a 20 gallon aquarium for its entire life, and it would never need any more room than that. Again, just fantastic pets and tons of color mutations that aren't that expensive. So if you want to get a really cool colored snake, it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg. One animal that doesn't get talked about nearly enough when it comes to pet animals are these Australian pythons. These are actually spotted pythons. There's actually a really closely related animal called a children's python that's just as cool too. This one's about six months old, feeding on fuzzy mice. They'll only get about four foot long, so they're really a fantastic animal. If you want a small animal, but you want it to be a python, this is a great choice. And this is how big an adult spotted python gets. As you can see, it's a really cool animal, and it's not that large of an animal, much smaller than a ball python as far as girth. And all pythons lay eggs, so these guys are gonna have anywhere from 13 to 15 eggs. They hatch out about the size of a corn snake, which is pretty cool, but they eat rodents really well. An animal this size, even as adult, only would eat one to two mice, maybe a small rat once a week. You're gonna keep these guys a little warmer than corn snakes in the upper 80s, somewhere in that range for the hot spot, and the lower 80s for the ambient temperature. And man, these are fantastic animals to keep. Another kind of obscure animal that you don't see nearly enough are all the sand boas. These guys are actually pretty cool. They're kind of unique and, and a little weird at the same time, but I actually really love them, especially the fact that their eyes are kind of on the top of their head. That way when they burrow down in the sand, they can actually have their head just barely above the sand and see what's going on. And then when something gets close to them, bam, they hit it, and that's the way they eat. These guys only get about three foot long. Males will actually stay under a foot long. So it's a good animal if you want a small snake. And this is how big an adult female gets. They can get a little larger, but this girl is ready to breed. And what's interesting about it is they'll have up to 35 live young, which is pretty awesome. And you can get these guys in a handful of different color phases right now, like aneuteristic, albino, snow, and a few other projects that are in the works right now. So again, if you want something that's a little unusual that your friend definitely doesn't have, it's a good chance it might be a sand boa. All right, guys, everybody knows there's a new season of American Idol. And us guys at the shop, we've been watching it, and we're just not too impressed, you know? So we decided to make our own audition tapes. Let's see what you think. I'm Steve from Michigan, Detroit, Michigan, and I'm going to be singing I'll Be There For You by Bon Jovi. Ready? I'll be there for you. These five words I swear to you When you breathe, I want to be the air for you I'll be there for you How you doing? My name's Cal, Shelby Township, Michigan um, It's always been a dream of mine to sing in front of these wonderful judges on American Idol and I'm going to sing a song called Foolish Games by Jewel the Song's uh, very close to my heart And these foolish games 
things are tearing me apart in your thoughtless words are breaking my heart you're breaking my heart yo 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 it's George in the house coming straight at you from Detroit, Michigan. That's how I rap like that, you know, throw them signs up. But I got an original song for you right now. It's called Balls on the Ground. It's hot, new, fresh track nobody's ever done before. Looking like a fool with my balls on the ground. Gold in my mouth. Hey, there's out. Balls on the ground. Balls on the ground. Looking like a snake with your balls on the ground. Balls on the ground. In your mouth. Hi, I'm Frinks from Detroit, Michigan. And I'm gonna sing you, The Devil Went Down to Georgia. The Devil Went Down to Georgia, he was looking for a soul to steal. He was in a bind, because he's way behind, he was looking to make a deal. I bet you didn't know it, but I'm a fiddle player too. I bet a fiddle of gold to get your soul to say I'm better than you. All right, guys, so there it is. We already sent those edition tapes out. The best of the best. Simon should be calling us soon. Without a doubt. Oh, cheesy. Mm -hmm. We're looking for you, Simon. There's a ton of small snakes I could have covered, and I just wanted to cover a handful of them. Now I want to move into the mid and even big snakes and talk about them a little bit. These carpet pythons are an Australian python, and you guys know I love Aussie pythons. This is about a six-month-old bread -like carpet. And they get about eight, nine foot, maybe maximum ten foot, and pretty heavy body. So you want to make sure to do your research and make sure you can care for an animal that size. This is an adult jaguar carpet python, and as you can see, what an incredibly beautiful animal. I love Aussie pythons, and these guys, you don't get much better than this. This is about as big as they get. Some localities will get a little bit larger and a little bit thicker, but you can see they're really handleable animals, and they're not monsters by any stretch. They do like to climb, and they are arboreal, so it is nice if you can give them a little bit of a tall cage. Although it's not 100% needed, they will enjoy it for sure. Another mid to big size animal are these boa constrictors. And I tell you what, boa constrictors, although they get kind of big, up to 10 foot and even a little bit larger at times, they're actually a really tame animal and one of the best pets when it comes to the large constrictor snakes. So if you're thinking about getting into kind of the big animals, the best step is to start with the boa constrictor. This guy's about six months old, they're born live and they're really cool. They come in a bunch of different color phases and again, they are a little bit big so you want to make sure you do your research before you decide to get an animal like this. And this is an adult boa constrictor. You know what, these were one of the very first snakes I ever owned. And I've never been without a boa constrictor. And there's a lot of legislation right now, like S-373, that you have to make sure that you're aware of. It's trying to actually outlaw the interstate traffic of these animals. I'm telling you what, I can't imagine my life without these boa constrictors, and even the big snakes for that matter. As you can see, they're really docile, and they make great animals, and they aren't always the monsters that they're being portrayed in the news media. Now we get into the monsters, like the Burmese pythons, reticulated pythons, rock pythons. These are actually really incredible animals, but they are a little more edgy, and you do have to be more careful about these animals. I believe in responsible pet ownership, so if you're not able to take care of an animal that's going to get 15, 18 foot, you definitely want to stay away from these guys. But if you have the ability to keep them, and you're going to be responsible and keep them throughout their life, they can be fantastic animals. This is an adult female Burmese python, and this is definitely not an entry-level pet by any means. You must educate yourself before you deal with an animal that can potentially be very harmful for you. If you know what you're doing, they're not really bad animals at all. I've been keeping them for 20 plus years, and I've never been in a position that can actually be harmful to myself. But again, I show a lot of respect for these animals. You need a lot of space, a lot of time. It costs a lot to keep things like this. So again, I'm not against keeping them, but you got to make sure that this is the right animal for you. Man, that was a lot of work. I'm telling you, I'm a little winded moving that snake around. It's amazing how strong those big snakes are. And that brings me to my final point. There are tons of snakes and reptiles out there that can make fantastic animals for you to work with. Make sure you pick the correct one for your correct environment and you're going to have a great experience. On this week's Comment of the Week on the Snake Bites, Puking, and 100th Show episode, the question was, what's your favorite moments from the first 100 Snake Bites show? And Coolio Tiffany said, My favorite moment was in Zombie Snake when he came through the door and whacked George with the hockey stick. That was hilarious. 
Yeah, that was a great episode. And whenever I get a chance to hit George in the head with a hockey stick, I'm not going to pass that one up. Until next time, you guys keep sending me creative comments. I'm going to feature you on a future episode. All right, guys, it's Cal's question of the week. Now, you know the big Super Bowl's coming up, and everybody's getting excited about that. Me, I'm not too big of a football fan, but I'll still catch Super Bowl for the commercials and the party. I want to know from you guys, are you huge football fans? Do you watch it at all, or do you just watch it for the commercials? Let me know. Text or video, comment below. So there it is. Reptiles are such a huge part of my life, and the whole reason for producing this show is so that I can share my passion of reptiles with you and hope that one day, if you don't already keep reptiles, you'll get some because they're such interesting animals. I want to give a shout out to a bunch of supporters overseas in the U.S. military. We just want to let you know that we really appreciate everything you do, and we're really glad that you enjoy the show. Until next time, this has been Snake Bites.